Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to take you back to some footage that we did last week, guys, because this, this stuff was the real deal. And I need people to help me think this through. And I haven't gotten a lot of constructive discussion on this so far. It's all been kind of like ignored, if you will, by the trolls and everybody. But the fact is, is that this with these rings and this photo that we got from Hawaii, you know, is getting validated even more with pictures like this, where you can see how there is something being hidden by a artificial system of some sort. It could, it could be naturally occurring, I suppose, but given the uniformity of two disks, and it looks like they do it with some kind of a sweep motion or some kind of, maybe this is the chemtrail pattern that they use to contain it. I don't know over time, but you get that pattern and I got to stay on this, right? Because it's interesting, number one. And, but then I get a picture like this one, which is just incredible because it, again, it shows the same thing again, only looking at it straight on. So I've been fascinated and stuck on this picture from Alaska, which also is confirming it and showing some kind of a weird, uh, call it a, a planet block the sun or whatever you want to call it. Now today's stuff, and I'm just going to keep going back to this stuff. This is just, this to me is the best stuff that we've ever done. And I don't want people to uh, ignore it, man, because it's it's it really helps us to understand and unlock the way this thing works. Now, here's further validation of the um, kind of artificial lighting system where, for some reason, we're getting this strange optical, very uniform optical effect on the camera for a period of time. Check it out. It's over many. It's over a couple of minutes. So it's not likely due to any kind of a water thing. And what you see over here on the right is some kind of an activity that might be the real objects that are being obfuscated. I just don't know, but it's very strange. Now look at the end of this thing where you get those balls on the top middle. Check those out. What's that all about, right? <laughs> and then finally we got some corroborating evidence in the same time frame up from Alaska. We're getting that same kind of multiple orb effect when we're looking at the moon. So kind of an interesting series of photographs, kind of an interesting series of things to look at together. So Newest let's go on to the next from thing our here. Physicist. Um, and this is uh, going to be a long one. So this might take a few minutes to get through it. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. But before I get into this, I wanted to talk about the movie The Shack. I went and saw it yesterday. If you guys have any questions about my theology, if you have any questions about who, what I believe God is like, what I believe the whole thing of Yeshua and the mission of quote-unquote Jesus Christ was, then watch that movie, The Shack, because that was my papa. That's the way my God acts towards me. That's the relation. That's the that's. I mean, it was rang true in every sense of the word with me. And I just wanted to say my favorite parts of the movie were the parts where they just basically tip over sacred cow after sake. I basically, in a nutshell, is what I believe. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the brown dwarf system, okay? So this physicist, our physicist, is making the case that the brown dwarf system is in the inner solar system, and this is from today. And I'm reading this. Uh, I skimmed it, but I'm going to read it with you, and we're going to break it down together. I've written multiple articles showing that the sun is going dark twice a year. I've clearly shown the evidence as provided in the images detected by the Solar Dynamics Observatory satellite. The SDO satellite has been in orbit since February 2011, and examination of the images since 2011 until recently has shown that the period of twice yearly dark sun cycle is T to the first power equals 130 plus or minus one day, and T2 equals 178 plus or minus one day as shown in table one below. So in other words, what we're seeing is a dark, what we're calling dun, dark sun cycle dates and the period of days in between each cycle. So you can take the notes on this, stop it, take notes, and you can go test our theory and go look at the images yourself from the SDO satellite. According to the gravitational theory of star formation and the theory that states that dark uh, stars are powered by thermonuclear reactions from within, it is possible for a star to go dark. It's impossible for a star to go dark. But the observations are telling us the sun is going dark. This means that we need a new theory which to explain what makes the sun work. Fortunately, we have the electric theory of the universe that states that stars are formed by galactic electric currents and that they are also powered by these currents. This means that if another star were to approach our sun, the current supplied from the center of the galaxy would flow through this older star and stop flowing through our, old, through our sun, causing it to lose its power supply and go dark. 
I don't think the electrical theory explains all what we're seeing happening. I think that the part of the sun's emission is due to fusion reactions, but these are happening on the surface in the atmosphere, not in the sun's core. Now, if an iron core brown dwarf star were to approach the sun, the iron in its cloud would enter the sun's atmosphere and stop fusion reactions occurring on its surface and atmosphere. However, even a helium core brown dwarf star would be able to do the same since it's it, since if the electric current was diverted to it, the sun would probably not have enough power to sustain its plasma in arc mode, which is what causes a high enough temperature in its atmosphere, which in turn enables a fusion reaction. So in other words, you just take the sun down a notch and it's enough to stop the fusion reactions on the surface, but it doesn't stop the light. It doesn't stop the coronal holes, as well as the light emitted to the uh, sun's plasma being in arc glow mode. Now, a planet could not possibly affect the sun in this way, period. All right, I'm not, you read the paragraph, I'm going to move down. Now, the fact that the dark, dark sun cycle period is not the same between each subsequent cycle that differs by five days, shown in Table 1, suggests that the star is passing very close to the sun's surface and causing it to go dark, which is not actually, is not actually orbiting the sun, but another star, which is in orbit around the sun, right? So, in other words, what we have here is not Nibiru, or maybe... But what we have is potentially a, a, you know, a dark brown dwarf that's entered into some kind of a binary dance with our star, which is the story, but still, it, it's just, it, it gets white weirder every day, right? So when you look at the science, though, the five-day difference means that the star comes very close, and then in addition, it suggests that the center of the mass of the system is closer to the sun than in September to March cycle. And because the star takes an additional four or five days to reach the sun during the September to March dark sun cycle. Then there's a calculation that that uh, that is being used here. But basically, this is the thing that tells it. You know that her theory is that the center of mass of the star system is between the orbits of Mercury and Venus, since Mercury's average orbital radius is 0 0.0038 AU and Venus orbital radius is 0.72 AU, which places the star, star system well within the solar system. So using these calculations. Um, and known information, we th you know, there's a possibility that the star is actually, you know, orbiting our our sun, and uh, it comes very close to our sun, <laughs> or not orbiting, but <clears throat> this is the illustration of the dark sun's uh, star orbit according to the physicists around the central star of the dark sun cycle star system, which is in orbit around the sun. The central star's orbit radius is 0.62 AU, which is 0.1 AU less than Venus's orbital radius. So this is what's going on in terms of the center star of the dark sun cycle system in orbit around, and then the orbit of dark sun cycle around the central star in the system is this other one that gets in front of the, in the sun. And I don't know how long we've been traveling in parallel with this thing, but from based on what I see from Sechi over a period of time, it's, it's been a while, right? So, assuming that the, that diagram was true, let's just jump down. This HI1A image, the object is to the left of the sun is labeled Venus, but as we will see later, it cannot be Venus. And we've seen this many times, okay? 2011, okay? Visible, it has a light blue area surrounding it, suggesting that it's very bright. A large transparent circle is also visible in the image. This figure shows a HI1 visible light images provided by Setri in 2011 and 20 in different two dates. And the sun seems to be having a violent emission of what looks like a plasma rain in the left image. In the right image, a lens flare of the brightest object in the image appears. The red arrow indicates the presence of the solar flaring activity visible on the lens flare, suggesting the object producing the lens flare is a star. Furthermore, you can see here that images provided by Sechi um, show that the object of interest starts a plasma ejection that in turn turns into a, an extremely large plasma loop. And again, it can't be the lens flare effect as told by MBB333 and some others that are mistaken on it. And these large orbs are also the, uh, visible in the system. And there's a, a plasma loop to illustrate what we're looking at. So you can see the plasma loops are very similar. HI1A HI visible light images in 2011 show that the object of interest has a jet plasma ejection, rounded plasma ejection from the area where the plasma loop originates. So in other words, what we're saying here is that this thing is basically 
been riding shotgun with our solar system for a period of time since 2011. I don't know if it's a cyclical thing. And then we show here in 2017 the same effect, this loop ejection. We can therefore conclude that the same object that gave rise to the planet's plasma injection seen both in March 2011 and February 2017, and it's probably a brown dwarf star. These images show um, the, interse the intersecting circles and coronal mass ejections caused by Venus and continuing on, just continuing to prove from these images that we had a 2011 event and a 2017 event. So basically, in conclusion, a brown dwarf star, which is probably one of the stars in the dark sun cycle star, system appears in such images in March 2011. The same brown dwarf star most probably produced the plasma ejection seen in such images from February 2017. And then I'll just go back to this diagram. This is where we're, this is where we're talking about now, guys. This is where we think the science sits on this thing right now, according to what we have. This is the diagram that tells it all, that we have a dark star circling our sun, or we're in binary dance mode. And that there's also a dark sun cycle star that's going around, or planet that's going around in the central star in the system. And so we have, we think that we have a bunch of stars that are dancing with each other. And that's what our physicist is saying. If you, have, you know, you can also go to Chris Potter's channel to get more in depth. And if you have any questions, just put them in my comment section or send me an email, olson.steven.d at gmail.com. Love to hear from you, and I'm glad to pass questions on to our physicist, who, by the way, is real. And um, just wanted to say, again, watch the shack um, and then come back and tell me what you think. Take care.